Hello everyone, welcome to questions and answers based on the course of computational finance. Today we have question number 16 that is based, the answer for this question is based on the materials covered in lecture number 7. The question of today is, can you interpret the Heston model parameters and their impact on the volatility surface? We already know that the Heston model is an extension of the Black-Scholes model where the volatility was given constant However, in the Keston Heston model, the volatility is driven by a stochastic process. And because we, it's not constant, it's a stochastic process, it allows for implant volatility skew and smile. Uh, depending on the model parameters, uh, we can um, obtain different shapes of implant volatilities, and that is very important in the process of calibration. Uh, in every model in finance, uh, what is always a big uh, target of every researcher is that parameters should be somehow independent. It means that each of the model parameters should have different impact on the implant volatility surface. And this is very well preserved in the model of Heston, where each of the parameters has different, plays different role in the calibration or different role in generating implant volatilities. So let us, let us take a look what are the possible shapes uh, of the implant volatilities and what role parameters play in this kind of uh, generation of implant volatilities. The more details about the parameters and the implant volatilities for the Heston model and also the calibration you can find in lecture number seven. So I highly recommend to revisit uh, that material. So in this first graph here, in first two graphs, we consider a mean reversion parameter kappa. So this is the parameter uh, for the mean reversion for the variance process. Uh, of course, in the setting here, we will the experiment is performed as follows. We choose some model parameters, and then we vary one by one of the parameters and see what is the impact on the implant volatility. Um, if you would like to even do it yourself, uh, there's uh, in the lecture I give a link uh, to the uh, Python and MATLAB codes where you can actually play with this uh, implant volatilities yourself. So if we look at the mean reversion, we will see that by increasing uh, mean reversion parameter, we will essentially, we have some skew and then we will change the level. So it has a little bit of a role. You can see there is an impact on skew, but also on the level. However, it is not so much pronounced. The skew, it is very limited. Uh, the effect on skew is very limited. In practice, um, mean reversion parameter is uh, often uh, pre-calibrated or prefixed. So this means that because this parameter plays a little bit of offsetting role uh, with respect to uh, correlation, so the correlation may offset a mean reversion, it is then preferred to keep this parameter fixed. And this is typically market practice. It will be fixed by, let's say, half, and then we will concentrate only on the calibration of the remaining parameters. So for example, we keep this one, and then in the calibration of the Heston model, the rest of the parameters will be chosen. As we have learned already in this course, it is very important if we consider a pricing model, there is always an objective that we should have as few model parameters as possible, because that means that the model is robust and we don't. And if we talk about hedging of model parameters, that's much more easier if we have fewer parameters. Uh, and also the aspect of calibration, more parameters, it means always much more difficult calibration and also homogeneity of the parameters. Parameters should not change too much every day from day to day. It's very important, uh, especially from the trader's perspective. So the first one is the, the mean reversion. And this is so we have a direction strike, K. Okay? And then here we have impact volatilities. On this graph, we have something different. Here, I, would like, I wanted to show you how the, what is the evolution of implied volatility. So what is the term structure of volatilities? So this means we consider here strike to be at the money. So it's a fixed at the money level and we vary here time to maturity, so op option expiries, and then we look how mean reversion would uh, affect the implant volatility term structure. We know that in the Heston model, we have a long-term mean, so it's a long-term mean parameter. We have initial parameter, uh, in initial variance, and then mean reversion, the speed of mean reversion, will tell us how fast the volatility would move from the initial point until reaches the, the equilibrium long-term mean. So that basically tells us how the at the money level of implied volatilities behaves. So this is something that if we would have, uh, this is actually you can consider a Black-Scholes model with 
constant parameter, constant sigma or sorry, time dependent sigma would basically correspond to the calibrating to add the money term structure. So this is what we see if we have a larger mean reversion. So this is what we actually expect here. So if we have a kappa equal to two, we expect impact volatilities go very, very fast from the initial point to equilibrium point, in this case of 31%. If speed of mean reversion is very low, this means the equilibrium, the long-term mean will reach this point very far away. It will take a lot of time before we get there. So of course, depending on the add the money term structure from the market, uh, this parameter can be pre-calibrated, chosen essentially as we would do it in the Black-Scholes case with time-dependent volatility. So this was a mean reversion. Then we have uh, also long-term mean and initial point. So we, we already know the relation with uh, speed of mean reversion, which tells us that tells how the volatility goes from an uh, initial point and reaches long-term mean. Uh, if we look at the long-term mean, essentially it is only changing the level, long-term uh, volatility. So there's not so much impact on skew or smile. It's only the, the level. And initial, it is also the same. It's together with mean reversion and long-term mean. It tells us about behavior of the implied volatility term structure. So this is not the most exciting parameter of the Heston model. Much more interesting is uh, the, the, the correlation where we have it here. So in this slide, I have prepared uh, implied impact of uh, gamma, so the vol-vol parameter, and also the correlation. So let's take a look at the vol-vol parameter. Here we have uh, different levels of the vol-vol, and we see that uh, more higher vol-vol, so volatility of volatility, we see there's a much more curvature in the model. So larger vol-vol parameter, larger gamma, then this means uh, less skew, more curvature, more smile. And from the correlation perspective, we have uh, in the Heston model, it is recommended to use only negative correlations and correlations control uh, skew, correlation controls skew. So larger or uh, stronger negative correlation, more skew in our model. It is actually proven in the uh, work of Anderson Peterbach that if we have a, a correlation that is positive, it may cause some numerical problems. Actually, it is possible to show that moments of the Heston model may even explode. And also from interpretation perspective, from practical perspective, we would expect negative correlation between asset and volatility. So if volatility goes high, asset goes down. Or if asset goes down, this means volatility should increase. This is also what we observe in the, the market. And also it follows the, the logical interpretation. So we see that we have a volatility, volatility, a lot of curvature, uh, correlation controls the skew, and then we have parameters kappa for the speed of mean reversion, initial volatility, which is corresponding to the level and also long-term mean uh, parameter V bar. So this is basically the interpretation of the, uh, the Heston model parameters. And let's take a look also at the volatility surface. So here I have prepared two cases. Uh, impact of the correlation. So we have a, a low correlation, uh, minus 20% for the left-hand side figure and minus 80% on the right-hand side figure. You can actually see that in a low correlation environment, we have much more smile in the implant volatilities. So here is the expiries, here is the strikes, here is the strikes and expiries. And if we make correlation stronger, then we will see much more skew in our implant volatilities. Um, the, one of the limitations uh, of the Heston model is that although there is a skew, it often happens that for short expiries, uh, this skew is insufficient. This means market could be, for example, going even like this, this much more extreme. And as you can see here, we already have 80% correlation or minus 80%. This, by moving it to, let's say, to 90% or 99%, we may not be able to generate this much skew. This skew, however, can be uh, added by, for example, considering the Bates model, where we would add jumps and then extra impact on uh, uh, skew, the short-term uh, expiries. Uh, will there be much more skew for short-term options? Okay, so this is the explanation of the model, the Heston model and parameters impact on implied volatilities. Uh, I hope it's clear. And for now, from now on, you will understand fully what is the connection between different parameters, their changes in the parameters, and their impact 
on the implied volatility surface. See you next time. Bye-bye.